Okay, so before we continue, is there any question? Okay, so we move on. The question then is, uh, where do the centers lie of these uh, <coughs> solids? And uh, what we are interested in is uh, sigma g and the value of kg here. <coughs> sigma g squared we already saw is f squared by 2 minus beta squared c squared by power 4 and that's almost f squared. So this is the actual modifying effect of uh, the beta beta p. You get frequencies that are slightly smaller than f from it. <coughs> well this is not right. It should be f squared by 2. No. This is f squared minus. Yeah, so this f squared by 2 should just be f squared. This 2 should not be there. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, kg, that's this point here, the center, lies at minus beta by 2 sigma g. That's uh, almost minus beta by 2f. <coughs> For the gravest wave. You can get higher signals, that's not a problem. But uh, And the k will shift closer to the sigma axis. Yes, any question? So this is as far as gravity waves are concerned. <coughs> okay. Now this was a problem. Right? This is actually page four. <coughs> when you look at sigma r squared, we get uh, this expression. Then we use the binomial expansion again. We get uh, beta sigma r squared is beta squared c squared by 4 f squared or sigma r is beta c by 2 f <coughs> and kr is minus beta by 2 sigma r if you substitute for sigma r you get uh, roughly minus f by c okay so these are non-dispersive waves sigma by k is uh, constant sigma by k does not depend on k so these are non-dispersive waves irrespective of the, you're not going to see a group of waves with individual parts separating out. That's not going to happen. So these are non-dispersive. <coughs> Again here we have assumed beta squared c squared by power 4 is much less than 1. <laughs> so this is our major relation. Sigma r is beta c by 2f. Subscript r is for Rossby waves. And note that Rossby waves do not exist for sigma greater than sigma r. This is called a critical frequency. Alternatively, if I write f critical, take it on the left hand side, then beta c by 2 sigma r. <coughs> so alternatively, Rossby waves do not exist for any given frequency, whole word of a critical latitude. So you will find them on the equator word of some latitude. If you describe the frequency and if you describe f then they do not exist <coughs> for frequencies higher than some critical frequency. So that is an important thing to note. <coughs> now the question is what happens if we use the simpler equation 20 from the HRG modes? We had uh, Started off with equation 19, where this is term A, term B, and this one is term C. Should write that term two. This was term C, and um, <coughs> by dropping terms A and B in comparison to term C, we found that we get a much simpler relation. In this case, if we look for free waves, we'll just get minus uh, this i omega f squared by c squared v plus beta v x term equal to zero. That's a much simpler equation. The question is, uh, 
what happens if you were to use that equation 20 instead of equation 19? <coughs> so what happens when you start with the simpler equations 20 from the HIG modes? This is what we have. Minus i omega f squared by c squared v plus beta vx. That's equal to i omega f by c squared capital F minus f y x. And uh, this is equation HIG 20. Setting the RHS to 0. And looking for solutions of the form e power i k x plus i l y as before. Yields minus i omega will become i sigma. So i sigma f squared by c squared plus i beta k. i k will be what you get from vx equals 0. The i's cancel out. <coughs> and you get k equals uh, beta c squared. Sorry, k equals minus sigma f squared by beta c squared which is basically the k equals minus f squared sigma by beta c squared. So you get the long loss behaviors. But that is the only solution you get. <coughs> when you start with a simpler set equations, when you start with HRG20, the only solution you get is the long Ross waves. You don't get the short Ross waves and you don't get the gravity waves. <coughs> so when we derived HRG20, we did that by dropping the UT and VT terms. So the moment you drop those terms, you lose the gravity waves and you also lose the short loss waves. So each term that is dropped has some physical consequence. Certain kinds of waves are filtered out of the solution. What it implies is that <coughs> if you drop those terms, the adjustment that gives you the long loss waves happens instantaneously. If you have those terms, then gravity waves will be radiated out and the system will adjust to radiating long loss waves. Now that is no longer possible if you use the simplest set. Why? Because you have filtered the gravity waves out of the system. So if you are looking at the interior of the ocean, let's forget about these short loss waves. <coughs> you are interested in the long loss wave. If you have a wind field that can generate that long loss wave, if you have the UT and VT terms, you will first see gravity waves. That's what will radiate out when you switch on the wind and later you will see the long Rossby waves. But if you don't have those terms, that adjustment has to occur, in, occur instantaneously. So that finite time, that adjustment time, which is the transient part of the Laplace transform, is filtered out. So you get the steady state, which is basically steady in the, some sense, the long Rossby wave as the instantaneous uh, set. So the long Rossby waves appear instantaneously in the solution. It's not over a finite uh, time, which is the time taken by the gravity waves to radiate out and set up the adjustment that gives you these long loss waves. <coughs> so that is a simplification that was made. And in doing that, we assume dou by dou t, that's 1 by capital T, t is the time scale, is much less than f. And a by c squared, that's the friction term, is again less than f. And we assume that the length scales, lx and ly, are greater than c by f. So we are away from boundaries. So every time you simplify, you lose something. When you drop the nonlinear terms, you lost the ability to have different uh, frequencies interact with one another. If you have u, du, dx, then uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2, if you have two frequencies in the forcing, in the response, for example, they can interact. Now with the linear system, they cannot interact. They are independent of each other. Likewise, when you separated out the vertical uh, dependence, there are certain things that get filtered out automatically. You cannot have a solution where uh, <coughs> the way, for example, uh, um, has a structure where it is you cannot uh, separate out x, y, and z, or in this case, typically x and z. X and z will play out separately. 
So there are certain things that are lost. That is not as critical. So what is uh, important is that in some regions, this interaction between frequencies is important. The interaction between wave numbers is important. All those things are lost here. <coughs> and of course, when you simplify even further, you lose many more things. But it leads you to the long Rossby wave, which is the most striking feature of the seasonal cycle in the North Indian Ocean. So you're starting with an observation, you're guessing a solution, you're looking to see what simplifications have to be made to the set of equations to get you there. It's always difficult the first time. Here it's been presented as a very logical set. You simplify and this is what you get. But the problem is always solved in the inverse order. You always have a physical problem to address, <coughs> which means you start off with the basic LCS equations, and you would have maybe equation 19. The question is how do you go about solving that? Uh, you probably have the complete set of LCS equations. <coughs> how do you go about simplifying? What terms can you drop? So you must have an idea of what you're looking for. Now, in other words, when you see that <coughs> propagation from the west coast of India, you already know it's a wave that propagates westward. Then the question is, what simplifications will get you there? That's how the problem is actually solved, not the way it's been addressed in the lecture. So it's easier to pass the GFD course than to apply GFD in practice. <coughs> I thought this would take two lectures. It's taken much less than that. I did it in two hours last time. But then I was writing on the board. So that time has gone. <coughs> That's why I didn't want to call it, uh, give it a separate number. <coughs> so if there are no questions, we can call it a day. I haven't seen those questions asked by <coughs> Arya Paul. So probably do that uh, week now. I mean, actually, if there are no questions, I'm going to end the broadcast. <laughs> Nod of the head, I assume. <laughs> no questions here. <laughs> right? Okay. So, when do we meet? <coughs>